Jack, Emma, and Mike had been looking forward to their camping trip for months. They drove deep into the forest, seeking a secluded spot far from the beaten path. By late afternoon, they found the perfect clearing beside a serene lake, surrounded by dense woods. They set up their tents, gathered wood for a fire, and settled in for a night of storytelling and stargazing. As the sun dipped below the horizon and the darkness crept in, the forest seemed to come alive with the sounds of the night. Crickets chirped, owls hooted, and the occasional rustle of leaves hinted at unseen creatures moving about. The three friends laughed and talked, their voices blending with the crackling of the campfire. Around midnight, Emma went to fetch more wood from the edge of the clearing. She was gone longer than expected, and when she returned, her face was pale, her eyes wide with fear. Guys, I think someone is out there, she whispered. Jack and Mike exchanged nervous glances but shrugged it off, attributing it to her imagination. But then they heard it, a faint, rhythmic sound of footsteps circling their campsite. The three friends fell silent, straining to listen. The footsteps stopped, and for a moment, there was only the crackle of the fire and their own breathing. Then, a low, guttural growl echoed from the darkness. Jack grabbed a flashlight and shone it into the woods, but the beam of light revealed nothing. The growl came again, closer this time, and was joined by another, more sinister sound, the soft rustling of leaves, as if something was moving stealthily towards them. Panic set in. They quickly doused the fire and huddled together, their backs against the cold metal of their car. The footsteps resumed, now faster, almost frantic, as if the unseen predator was growing impatient. The friends could feel its eyes on them, piercing through the darkness. Suddenly, Mike's flashlight flickered and died. He cursed under his breath, and Jack fumbled for his phone to use as a light. Just then, a blood-curdling scream pierced the night air, making their blood run cold. It came from the direction of the lake. Emma's face went even paler. We need to leave. Now. They scrambled into the car, but as Jack turned the key, the engine sputtered and refused to start. Desperation clawed at them. They could hear the footsteps again, now pounding towards them, faster and faster. Jack tried the engine again, and this time, it roared to life. Without a second thought, he slammed the car into reverse, and they sped down the rough dirt path, branches scraping the sides of the car like claws. As they drove away, they caught a glimpse of something in the rearview mirror, tall, shadowy figures emerging from the trees, their eyes glowing like embers in the darkness. They were humanoid but twisted, with long limbs and sharp claws that gleamed in the moonlight. They didn't stop until they reached the nearest town, the safety of the streetlights a welcome relief. Shaken and exhausted, they collapsed into a diner and tried to explain what had happened, but the words failed them. They only knew one thing for certain, they had been hunted, and they had barely escaped with their lives. The next day, they returned to retrieve their gear, but found only an empty campsite. Their tents were shredded, and deep, clawed footprints circled the clearing. The authorities dismissed their story as a wild animal attack, but the friends knew better. Something was out there, something that had tasted their fear and would be waiting, hungry and patient, for its next prey.